Hello Unity fans, today we are going to implement a way to light and extinguish fires based on when specific events occur. We will also add a flickering effect to the light. We won't be focusing on the game objects or models themselves, but on the code required to enable the light with a fade in effect, enable particle system emissions at the correct time, and eventually fade out the light and disable the particle system's emissions again. All of this will be controlled by specified events, with all the fires reacting with a random delay when one of these events are triggered. Or in this case, I guess you can say, when the event fires. There's a link to the scripts in the description of this video. Let's get going. In a big scene, we may have many fires, torches or other light sources that may have to be lit and extinguished at specific times. If they're all dependent on the same event or group of events occurring, especially when the events are based on lengths of time, each light source does not have to keep track of time for itself. We can rather have one main time tracker script that keeps track of the in-game time. That script can then fire off events at specific times. Each fire or light can subscribe to these events, then just wait for the event to fire upon which it runs the required method. In order to implement this, we start off with a static class that keeps track of time and implements various possible events, which can be subscribed to from different scripts in our project. We'll call it the time tick system. Depending on our situation, we may want to send the time of day to the subscribers of the event. So we create an event arguments class for this. We are going to define only two static events in this example, namely when the fires or lights should be lit and when they should be put out. Next, we have some private working variables. Firstly, we're going to create a game object to house our time tick system. And we're also catering for a reference to the time tick system we'll be creating soon. We'll have to store the current time of day as well as the time of day on the previous frame, so we can test when exactly our time thresholds are crossed. We also have a speed variable that indicates how many in-game seconds should pass for every real-world second. And we have a boolean indicating whether fires should currently be lit or not. We will use this for determining the starting state of fires that are added to the scene in real time. Finally, we use a vector 3 to also store the time of day in hour, minute, second format, just to make it a bit easier to work with. Next, we allow other scripts to access some of our private variables. The R fires lit indicator and seconds per second parameters are pretty straightforward, but we want to enforce some rules when the time of day is set from outside. For example, we need to set the previous time of day equal to this starting value or even slightly lower to initialize it. And we need to also set our hour, minute, second version of the time. Finally, we need to run a special test for our events to know which state our fires should be in when the time is set. So we don't have to wait for a full cycle of time to run through before the event fires. We'll get to that a bit later. Finally, we also allow scripts to set the time in hour, minute, second format by just calling the previous float-based version with the hour-minute-second-based time converted to float. The conversion method is quite simple, since an hour equals 3600 seconds, while a minute equals 60 seconds. While we're here, we could also add a method to convert from float time to hour-minute-second time, by just working in reverse, flooring to count completed hours and minutes. The final method we need is a test for whether the time falls between a chosen start time and end time. It's quite simple to test, but you also need to remember that start time is not necessarily smaller than end time, since it could be taken from afternoon to the following morning. So we just implement the inverse for that case. With all of that in place, the time tick system is actually very simple. Each frame, it adds the delta time onto the time of day scaling by the speed. Then, if the time is larger than 86,400 seconds, it means we have passed midnight. So we could increase a day's counter if we needed one. 
Then subtract 86,400 seconds to reset the time to the beginning of the day. Now, before saving the current time as the time on the previous frame, we test whether any of our events need to fire. I've hard-coded the times in these tests to keep it a bit simpler, but you typically want to make them parameters that can be set similar to how the speed or time itself can be set. We just test whether the time on the previous frame was before the 6pm threshold and the time on the new frame is on or after the 6pm threshold. If so, we fire the on light fires event. We first test whether there are indeed any subscribers to the event, else it makes no sense to fire. I'm using the useful new shorthand version of testing for null and invoking in case it's not null. We then set the R fires lit indicator to true. The test for extinguishing the fires are similar, just with a different time, 1am, and we call the other event and set the lit indicator to false in this case. The last method allows us to check whether fires should be lit when the time of day is reset from a different script. This will only be run once when the time is set, so that the event doesn't keep firing every frame. And that's all we need to keep track of the time of day, and fire off our two events at the appropriate times. Now we need some subscribers to the events. We're going to use a campfire model which you can download under Creative Commons with Attribution from Sketchfab. I'll put the link and the author in the description. Added to this will be a particle system creating our flames, which I'm unfortunately not allowed to share. But I'm not going to focus on the specific particle system in this tutorial, so anything you have available or put together quickly is fine. Finally, we have a normal point light game object to provide the flickering light. So let's start with a particle system. We attach a light my fire script to the main game object with the aim of enabling or disabling all the particle system components found in its children objects when the event fires. This helps when your fire is made up of more than one particle system. In the start method, we test whether fires should currently be lit, and if they should be, we enable the particle systems, else we disable them. Next, we subscribe to the on light fires and on extinguish fires events of the time ticker system, with the two local functions to light and extinguish our fires. All these methods do is search for all particle systems in the children of the game object and for each of them either enable or disable the emission systems. Quite simple. Our final method ensures the game object unsubscribes from the events in case it is ever destroyed. Otherwise, you could get error messages when the event fires. So now our fires are lit and extinguished at the correct time. But there are two things bothering me still. Firstly, they have no light yet. You could add a light as part of the particle system, but I would actually like to make the light flicker a bit by adding some random noise to its position and intensity over time. Secondly, all the fires light up and die down at exactly the same time. This could be appropriate in certain situations, but it would be nice to allow some random delay to each fire, so that they don't all align exactly. However, each fire needs to be aligned to its own light, otherwise the light may appear before the flames, or vice versa. So for the fire, we will add the option of having its event call delegated to its associated light, which we'll get to in a moment. That's what this delegate events indicator that you would have noticed is for. If delegate events is set to true, the fire don't actually subscribe to the events, but will wait for the light to also call the fires event whenever it calls its own event, after a random delay. So let's add a myFireLight script to the point light of our campfire. In addition to subscribing to the event and possibly calling the fires event as well, we want to add a flickering to the light. The parameters it takes are firstly the speed at which to scroll through the random Perlin noise generator for position and for speed, then the base intensity for the light, followed by the scale to apply to the noise for the position and for the intensity. Finally, we have the fade in and fade out times as well as the ranges of a random delay in seconds. Next, we have our private variables, which are pretty self-explanatory. Here you will see the reference to the possible light my fire script. 
which we capture in the start method. We also reference the light component and its starting position. Finally, we initialize our fade values. Now, as with the fires, we test whether the light should be shining and run the appropriate local method. We also subscribe to the events exactly as before. In the light and extinguish methods, we firstly set burning to the appropriate value. Next, we check if a light my fire script was found on the parent object. If one was found and its delicate events parameter is true, we also fire its event. So the two events will be aligned. Around this you'll see a function timer create call. This is one of CodeMonkey's very useful utilities, which I'll also link to in the description. All it does here is delay the running of those actions by a random length of time, which will set to between 0 and 10 seconds. So our fires now start up within a 10 second window, which looks better than all at once. Depending on the particle system, you will have to play around with the delays here to align the dying out of the flames with that of the light. I've basically just set it to 50% of the fade out time here. Finally, let's add that flickering effect to our fire's light. To enable us to do this, we firstly sample from a perlid noise for the X, Y and Z coordinates. There are many possible ways to accomplish this, but I've just multiplied the accumulated game time with the position scroll speed. Then added constants so that the samples are taken at slightly different locations. We subtract a half to center the samples around zero. Then return this delta position after scaling it as required. Similarly, we create a new intensity by multiplying the Perlin noise sample by the intensity scale and adding the base intensity onto it. Now, for each frame, we adjust the light's intensity and position by these sampled noises to change them randomly but in a smooth way as we scroll through the Perlin noise. You will see how we adjust the intensity and delta position by the fade in and fade out values as well to combine everything. Now all that remains is to also unsubscribe from the events if the object is ever destroyed to prevent the error of trying to call a method that doesn't exist anymore. And now our fires are starting up with random delays but aligned to their lights whenever their events are triggered. We could now add these as standalone objects to our scene or combine them into other larger objects and prefabs and they will all adhere to the same principles, all regulated by the one time tick system. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions and remember I'll leave a link to the scripts in the description if you'd like to try them out. Please consider liking and subscribing if you'd like to see more tutorials like this one as well as my Hexmap game development series. Goodbye!